90% of all millionaires got wealthy through real estate. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to buy your first rental property. What's going on guys? It's Shaziah, your success strategist. And now is the time for you to start building wealth. Now is the time for you to start making passive income. And that's exactly what you're going to learn how to do in today's lesson. By the time you're done watching this video, you'll know exactly how to own an investment property step by step. And you'll have the best secrets on what to do before and after you've bought the property so that you can maximize your investment for years to come. All you need to do is smash that like button because that'll help me make more real estate videos just like this. The first step towards buying your first rental property is building your credit. Your credit will make or break you when it comes to being approved for a mortgage. In my experience, the most painful part of closing on a property is dealing with an underwriter. An underwriter tries to find any reason possible to deny you from getting a loan. And the underwriter will always try to deny you based on your credit history. It's not enough that you're making good decisions today when it comes to your money. Even decisions that you made as far as 10 years ago could come back to bite you. So it's very important that you clean up your credit so that you don't waste time going through this process. You can order a free copy of your credit report once a year, and I recommend that you review your report just to see how everything looks before applying for a loan. I can't stress this enough because every time I've gone through a process of closing on a property, the underwriter has always come back with something crazy. Uzziah, did you know that your parent put your name on a loan while you were a teenager? Uzziah, remember this address that you were living at back in 2010? Your credit report shows that you're still living there. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I'm stripping. This was always the most annoying part of the process because it would always push back the closing date. And I would have to write these letters and give all of these reasons as to why the things they were bringing up had absolutely nothing to do with my credit history. So I highly suggest that you get in front of this today so that you can make the process of buying your first rental property as smooth as possible. You may not know this, but there are common errors and mistakes that are found on people's credit reports all the time. I highly recommend that you get your credit score to a 750 or higher. This will help you get the best interest rates on your mortgage. Now don't worry, it's not impossible to buy a rental property if you have lower credit, but it does make the process a little bit harder. In fact, when the lockdowns first started happening in early 2020, Chase Bank required that you had a 700 credit score along with a 20% down payment just to qualify. The best way that you can qualify for an underwriter is to have three successful trade lines on your credit report. This includes two credit cards and either one auto loan, a student loan, or an installment loan. This will show them that you have good history when it comes to handling major lines of credit. You also want to show that these accounts have been in good standing for at least six months or longer so that you can show that you have an established credit history on your report. Now you don't have to go through the bank to take out a mortgage to buy your first rental property. You can also set up what's known as a private financing agreement with the seller. But for the ease of this video, I'm gonna keep it simple and discuss the traditional method, which is going through a bank. Speaking of banks, the banks will wanna see your W-2s where they're looking for steady employment of two years or longer. They'll prefer that you're working a nine to five job because the guaranteed income that comes on the first and 15th is a lot less riskier for them than if you were an entrepreneur and your income was uncertain. If you're an entrepreneur, you can still qualify, but the process may be a little more rigorous. Now the banks check your income statements because they wanna make sure that you can afford the property. And the more records that you can provide up front, the better. The last thing that you wanna do is be in a bidding war for your first rental property, and you miss out on the deal because you didn't have your tax statements properly organized. If this is your first time buying a home, this will be the longest paperwork signing process that you have ever experienced in your life. 
So don't expect it to be a walk in the park. Mentally prepare yourself to build up the stamina to go through this process every day for at least two to three months minimum. This is a time consuming journey that will require multiple phone calls, emails, and in-person visits. The second step towards buying your first rental property is planning your down payment. The first thing that you wanna ask yourself when it comes to this is, will you be buying this property owner occupied or will this be an investment property? If it's an owner occupied, that means that you'll be living in one of the units while renting out the rest to other tenants. If it's an investment property, you'll be living somewhere else. If you don't plan on living at the property, your credit and finances will have to be stronger than somebody who's doing an owner occupied. This is because of something called PMI, private mortgage insurance. PMI is a monthly additional cost that's charged to you by the banks, just as a way of insuring themselves in case you can't keep up with the monthly mortgage. They want to protect themselves from the risk of selling homes that people can't afford, which is why your down payment plays such an important part in you getting the loan. To avoid PMI on an owner-occupied property, you'll need to put down 20%. To avoid PMI on an investment property, you'll need to put down 25%. But Uzziah, 20 to 25 sounds so high. How can I get a property at a lower price? You don't have to put down 20 to 25% in order to buy. In fact, the average home buyer typically puts down 7% on a down payment. And there are programs that allows you to put no money down at all. All you need to know is that by lowering your down payment, that translates into a bigger loan and a higher monthly mortgage. If your credit isn't where it needs to be and you need to raise your income, I highly suggest you check out my program, Zero to Six Figures. In there, I show you how to get a perfect credit score on top of building passive income streams. Details in the description below. But honestly, if you're planning on making this a purely investment property, having a higher monthly payment won't be so bad as long as you're making enough income from it where your tenants can cover it. If you do decide to make a down payment, then be sure to open up a separate savings or money market account at your local bank. Label that account down payment fund. Now remember, the goal of this account is not to get rich from it. So don't spend a billion years surfing the web trying to find the highest interest rate. Instead, we just need a safe holding place to put this money so that it doesn't get caught up in the day-to-day -day funds that you're using from your checking account. Next, you'll need to create a category on your budget called down payment and set a goal for how much money you can afford to set aside every month after bills. You can even set up an automatic transfer through your bank where money will flow into your account so you don't even have to think about it. Now I know you're probably wondering, but Uzziah, how do I know how much I'm supposed to be saving and I don't know how much the property is? Well, I'm so glad you asked because that's the next thing that we'll be covering. If you plan on staying at this place owner-occupied, you should spend no more than 25% of your monthly take-home pay towards your housing expenses. This includes your mortgage principal, interest, property taxes, homeowner's insurance, HOA fees, and PMI, just in case you have it. If you're looking to pay more than 25% of your monthly income on housing expenses, you can't afford it. To help you determine the max amount of what the total property value should be, I've included a mortgage calculator for you in the description below. Fill it out, get the numbers, and make sure that the total monthly expenses do not exceed 25%. Most lenders typically recommend that you don't buy a house that's three to five times more than your annual household income. You can also get pre-qualified by the bank you wanna do your mortgage with to determine how much of a mortgage you can afford. Once you have the numbers down, you can start saving your down payment money into your down payment savings account. Also, this is a really important tip. You need to save an additional $10,000 towards closing costs. 
Closing costs is one of the biggest things that most people always forget whenever they're saving up for a home. And if you don't put aside some money for this, you could find yourself in a sticky situation. If you haven't properly prepared to buy a property, you can easily go into debt because home ownership is the most expensive purchase that most adults will ever make. Between purchasing, upkeep, renovations, and repairs, it is definitely a lot of money. So you want to make sure that you're investing into a property that's an asset and not a liability. Which leads us to the third point. The third step towards buying your first rental property is finding the best rental property on the market. To keep this simple, I recommend that you Google a top rated real estate agent in your city. You don't need a real estate license to buy a property. You can find an agent and you don't want to hire an average Joe. You want to work with somebody that has years of experience finding the best cash flow positive properties that are on the market. Knowing the ins and outs about the neighborhood, identifying the red flags that you would never catch, and so much more. And you don't want to just up and buy any property that they show you. Not every property is profitable. If you're truly in it to win it, you're going to follow the 110 Three, one rule. Did that sound simple? The 100, 10, 3, 1 rule means that as a real estate investor, you must look through 100 properties in order to find the 10 best deals that are most profitable. From those 10 deals, you'll submit offers on the top three. And of the three offers that you submitted, you'll walk away with the number one best deal of the offers that were accepted. Now, I know that this could sound very tedious, but what I also know is that you would much rather take your time to make good money than for you to rush and be stuck into a financial bind for the rest of your life. Now, of course, there's a few activities that you'll need to do along the way, like putting up your earnest money, getting an inspection, selecting a loan from the bank, getting an appraisal, as well as closing. But as a free bonus, I want to share with you my top 10 tips on how to make the most of your property. Tip number one, smash the like button. By far, this is the most important tip that I could give you out of the 10. Number two, start small. Now in the real estate market, there are a bunch of different properties like a home, a duplex, a triplex, a fourplex, commercial property, and so much more. But I advise that when you're first starting off, you want to start off small so that when you make mistakes, you can make those mistakes as small as possible. When you're first getting started with buying your first rental property, there's a lot about this real estate game that you really don't know. So be willing to learn, start small, and make your mistakes as little as possible. Number three, don't go renovation crazy because that can get really expensive really quick. Instead, you wanna buy a property that's already in good condition. Number four, buy a property that already has good tenants. This will make things easy because you'll already have a proven track record of reliable people paying to live there. This will cut down on your investing risk drastically. Number five, if possible, fill out your homestead exemption immediately after buying the property. This can save you thousands of dollars. Number six, protest your property taxes. Now you'll have to pay property taxes every year and typically they always go up. I personally use a third party company that does this for me to keep things simple. But if you want, you could do it yourself. Number seven, don't live any farther than 30 minutes away from your rental property, unless you plan on hiring a property manager to handle things for you. Number eight, prepare for unexpected emergencies. Life happens, so you should probably get prepared by setting some money aside in an emergency fund savings account just to cover any breakdowns of appliances or other things that would require immediate attention. 
you'll also want an umbrella insurance policy as part of your homeowner's insurance. Number nine, put your property under an LLC. With an LLC, if your tenant tries to sue you, they can't come for your personal assets. And lastly, number 10, you want to think about real estate investing like a game of Monopoly. You don't need to go all out once you land on your very first purchase. You're just trying to get in the game so that you can start collecting rent and building up some equity. Give it some time and be consistent. And once you've gotten farther along, then that's when you can look into buying Boardwalk and Park Place. So thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate your support. And if you enjoyed all of the free value that I gave you in this video, please do me a favor and smash that like button. It only takes one second, but it goes a really long way to helping my channel grow. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you can receive more great videos just like this. And leave me a comment to let me know what you're going to do to create generational wealth and buy your first property. Until then, stay focused, and I'll see you on the next video. Keep pushing.